Sometimes you just gotta go. You will never know what you could ever be. If you never try, you will never see. Stayed in Africa, we ain't never leave. So the one don't slay in a history. One no slave ships, one no misery. Call me crazy, or isn't he? See, I fell asleep and I had a dream. It was all black. Black history is highly centered on the concept of Sankofa, the process of returning to the source to gain information relevant for understanding black studies today. In other words, it is a source of knowledge. This concept drives scholars all the way back to the beginning of human existence. Commonly misconceived, the history of African Americans began, as with all humans, as far back as over 2.4 million years ago in Africa. However, according to Karenga, true human civilization began to arise about 35,000 years ago. It is around this time that Egypt arises from the Nile, laying the basis for the Nile Valley civilizations. These civilizations were comprised of Egypt, Nubia, and Ethiopia countries that attracted people from all over the continent, bringing knowledge, culture, and power. For years, these civilizations flourished, giving rise to the Western Sudanic civilizations as well as the Moorish Empire. These civilizations went from impacting the country to impacting the world. The Moorish Empire, for instance, was greatly responsible for Spain's Golden Age in the 1400s giving them knowledge on how to revive their nation and flourish, a great deed that backfired. Fueled by profit, war, and power, the transatlantic slave trade was responsible for killing 50 to 100 million Africans. Though responsible for the African-American population, Karanga points out African presence in America prior to this event. Utilizing most of the skills taught to them by Africans, Europeans sought eagerly to destroy the African culture through enslavement, among other methods. Those enslaved faced deep brutality, cultural genocide, and machinery of control, such as slave laws, defining Africans as property. Following this dehumanization came resistance. There were actions such as slow work, stealing food, and ultimately escape. Pushed by this notion of rebellion, efforts for the reconstruction after the Civil War brought about many of the great names in black history, such as W.E.B. Du Bois, Booker T. Washington, and Marcus Garvey, each embodying a different ideal of Afrocentricity. Du Bois pushed for integration, where black people made efforts to integrate with the American society for the purpose of education and prosperity, as seen with the talented Ten. However, Washington and Garvey more so opposed. Washington believed in the self-made man, where one works their way up, remaining economically integrated and socially separated. In the opposite extreme of Du Bois, Garvey pushed separatism, where black people remained completely separate of white people, even going as far as returning back to Africa. The struggle of these individuals, among many others, pushed African Americans forward into the black power movement, in which black people fought to achieve self-determination, self-respect, and self-defense. This movement also gave a thrust to religion, mainly in Christianity and Islam. But I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. Religion has always been important in black life in Africa and America. For African Americans, religion was a much more holistic experience, which could be traced back to history. 
Religious gatherings were the only opportunity for slaves to come together. Therefore, through religion, those enslaved gained self-worth, while the only source of self-worth was the resistance to genocide. In resisting slavery, slaves found values in themselves, gaining purpose and faith. A part of this holistic experience was that many leaders started from the church, beginning at the spiritual level, then spreading to the community. The, this concept embodied that of the Germanic leader, a tradition that from the pulpit comes the leader. Individuals such as Martin Luther King and Malcolm X pushed this ideal, placing on religious leaders the responsibility of taking a stand in the black community. Though having the same goal, the liberation of black people, King and Malcolm X differed in their approach to the issue of racism. Just as during slavery, King advocated nonviolent social resistance for the liberation of black people. In this, it was necessary for Christianity to have a social function, therefore dealing with social as well as spiritual well-being. However, Malcolm X later argued a more defensive struggle against oppression. Freedom is the essential to human life, which justifies the right to fight for it. Under the teachings of the Quran, Malcolm X sought to liberate not only the body, but the minds of black people. Meanwhile, during the same time, under the teachings of the Bible and his father, Martin Luther King Jr. took a tremendous stand in the struggle against oppression. However, controversy came in with the birth of the character Uncle Tom from the novel Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. Malcolm X then labels King as an Uncle Tom due to his Christianity and nonviolent approach to slavery, just as the character in the book. Tom, back during slavery, used to keep the Negroes from resisting the bloodhound or resisting the Ku Klux Klan by teaching them to, to love their enemy or pray for those who use them despitefully. Today, uh, Martin Luther King is just a 20th century or modern Uncle Tom or a religious Uncle Tom who is doing the same thing today to keep Negroes defenseless in the face of attack that Uncle Tom did on the plantation to keep those Negroes defenseless in the, in the face of the attack. This character developed into a negative stereotype in the black community as one who sells out their race. Ironically, King played a major part in helping his race. This stereotype was one of the many placed on black people, bringing about social concerns discussed by Karenga. Karenga starts the discussion of sociology with the problem of ghettoization. It is to be understood that black people were not the first to live in this environment, so why is it so relevant in the black community? In the 1940s, architectural plans were developed to create mega housing, also known as the projects in the birthplace of hip hop. People were forced into these communities together with no way out. Segregation became a major part of this forcing black people to live in certain places and conditions. Ghettos became territorial, racial, institutional, political, and psychocultural. Also, in the 1940s came the issue of stereotyping. Not only physically boxed in, black people became mentally boxed in by the certain negative images. They were labeled as ignorant, violent, and animalistic, among other things, and were therefore not fit for society. Images such as the singing, dancing Sambo and the ignorant Zip Coon became big forces in the politics of slavery. The creation of the minstrel show made these images widespread and even more believable among the masses. This tool of racism made the struggle for social equality even harder. Opposing the many tools used to oppress black people was the Crucian paradigm, stating that we need economic and political freedom before we can have a sense of self-worth. Also opposing these tools was the Kuwaita paradigm, battling for the black mind. Fire, 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 fire. 